Hello, boys and girls. Got uh, another video today for you fine folks on the internet. Another installment here in the Matthew Buckley Talks Music series. The uh, third installment uh, in this trilogy of sorts centered around Vashti Bunyan. Uh, concluding here with her third and uh, at the current time final and probably forever final album Heart Leap released in October of 2014 uh, on Fat Cat Records for United Kingdom distribution and this Cretina Stair Builders for US distribution and uh, through a collaborative uh, Fat Cat Records Yaka and Imparment if I'm pronouncing that correctly uh, for J Japanese distribution and then uh, issued on vinyl by Fat Cat Records in uh, Europe and by Discretina Stair Builders in the United States. So a little bit of a background. I've already spoken a bit about Vashti Bunyan between my last two videos uh, discussing her. So check those out if you're not uh, if you haven't seen those already. But uh, about this particular album, so after returning to the public eye with the release of her 2005 album, Look Aftering, um, Vashti Bunyan took to touring with a small ensemble of backing musicians to perform her songs, both old and new, for you know, an audience she had never realized she'd had. And after some seven years of working the road at a casual pace, um, Bunyan had assembled another collection of songs to record as a third full-length album. Uh, it was chiefly recorded at her home studio, and was actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, produced entirely by Bunyan, or at least chiefly by Bunyan, and uh, quietly released in the fall of 2014 to very warm reception. So, uh, the songs themselves, Side A opens with the acoustic pickings of Across the Water, which apparently features improvised strings by uh, Fiona Bryce and Ian Burge. Lyrically, the song takes kind of a macro view rather than the micro view taken in many of her songs, you know, like Rainbow River and uh, Swallow Song from her first album, you know, to name a couple. Where it zeroes in on the, you know, infinite beauty of every small moment. This is a much more big picture view than those. Uh, she sings that every day is every day. Can't tell one from the other. I love that. There's a few other really brilliant lyrics in the song. It's, it's a stellar start to the album. Delicate, but assertive in its own gentle way. And the next track, Holy Smoke, is similarly delicate. Three guitars meandering ar around beneath Bunyan's hushed vocals. Uh, particularly worthy of note is a lyric from the third verse. I do remember what an old friend told me. He said, don't you go worrying about me. I'm only sad as I want to be. Oof. That stops me every time. The string arrangement for the coda is simply gorgeous. I should note that as well. Let me take a sip of tea here for the working man. Ah, I got some, some ginger peach. For any who might be curious out there. It's good stuff. <clears throat> the next track, Mother, begins with some solo piano, and Bunyan goes on to sing of being a child and watching her mother dance and sing while her mother believes herself to be unwatched. In the last verse, Bunyan sings that, My applause should have been rapturous, but I closed the door and turned, turned away. I know I've been in such situations where, looking back, I regret leaving my accolades for others unspoken. 
for whatever excuse I may have had at the time. And the next track, Jellyfish, begins with what must be synthesizer sounds. You know, it sounds much like chimes or bells, but the credits do not list such things. <laughs> um, Bunyan sings of dreaming that she jumped into the sea, desperately wanting a particular someone to rescue her, only to see this person in question frown at her. She sings that all this person saw was a Portuguese man of war, hence the jellyfish title. She goes on to sing that she dreamt she drowned in the sea, wearing the frown of the one that she wished would save her. The strings sweep away into infinity as Bunyan sings that she's hopefully come to her senses. Beautiful song. Sad, but beautiful. The next track, Shell, is a sweet song. It's kind of hard to tell if Bunyan is singing to an old lover or to a child who has grown and moved on. She draws similarities between herself and her mother and thinking of what it takes to be free. It is a lovely song, and side A. Side B opens with The Boy, ushered in by wispy synth sounds and Bunyan's whispery vocals. And it details a young boy growing up and taking in everything he sees in the world around him. He'll be what he will be as she sings. The next track, Gunpowder, begins with acoustic guitar picking, and Bunyan sings that however hard she tries, her words never say what she wants them to say. And she goes on to sing about uh, her words, lighting the gunpowder trails that you lay. Brilliant writing. Uh, the third verse is a small tragedy that honestly too many of us can relate to. Bunyan sings that she uh, blows her chances and you throw the years out with all the merry dances. Ugh, I feel that. The final verse concludes with Bunyan singing that she should look for a shed to keep her words padlocked away and silently out of harm's way. I love this song. Sad, but so well written. The following track, Blue Shed, takes that idea from the last verse and stretches it even further. Bunyan begins singing as an introvert, wishing to isolate herself behind the locked door of a blue shed. But by the last verse, she begins to express worry that when she emerges from this shed, everyone else in the world may have isolated themselves within the locked doors of a blue shed of their own. I like that a lot. And the next track, Here, has perhaps the most subdued vocal delivery Bunyan gives on the entire album, which is really saying something. <clears throat> she opens her eyes, her love is there. She closes her eyes, her love is here. Um, it's, it's lovely. Another sip of tea. Uh, Bunyan plays dulcitone on the song, which is another instrument I didn't know about until this review. The uh, following song... <laughs> is the title track, Heart Leap. Very basic track, only guitar and synthesizer by Bunyan. And unlike the rest of the songs, which had been written over the years leading up to the album, uh, it was the last song written for the album, created while Bunyan reflected on the album artwork. In her own words, the song is her take on Love and Heartbreak and Love Again. The song follows a cycle of compound phrases based around heart and head, conveying longing, impulse, faith, pain.
pain, love, and such themes through the dichotomy of emotion with heart and reason with head, respectively. Another whimsical and somewhat wispy song, The Sounds of an Emotional Dreamscape. It's a fantastic conclusion to Side B and the album. So, final thoughts, you know, another incredible album. Overall, a bit more delicate and reserved than even Look Aftering, which was itself a very soft and gentle album. Multiple songs are instrumentally lean, let me put it that way. You know, only guitar and synth by Bunyan, guitar and synthesizer. Perhaps accompanying strings or flute, you know, something like that. Uh, the fact that even with such sparse arrangements, the strength of these songs shines through so clearly speaks volumes of Bunyan's songwriting capacities even in her own words, unable to read or write music, or even play piano with more than one hand at a time, which, when I read that in an interview, I, you know, I, my jaw, ah, dropped. <laughs> um, but, you know, she touches on themes of love, loss, family, isolation, regret, childhood, the passage of time, and overarching journey of life. As I said earlier, Bunyan has claimed that Heart Leap will be her final album. And almost seven years on now from its release, uh, it seems like she might keep her word. And, you know, as sad a prospect as that is, it's at least a truly high note to go out on. A soft but strong album from start to finish. One that I've listened to, you know, front to back plenty of times and you know just as I said about uh, look aftering and as I've said about Diamond Day you know they've both accompanied me through uh, some 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 dark nights and some bright days you know this album is is really it's perfect for a lot of different states of mind you know like I said about look aftering if you're up if you're down if you're doing something else let me get a closer look for you guys at the uh, cover art here another fine portrait I believe by uh, Quinn Lewis uh, or one of her children the back cover is again is a very similar design to look after and minimalist just kind of a simple cursive track list on the back similarly styled drawing of a little critter on the front even the interior is designed similarly Another piece of art and thanks from Bunyan to various people. Lyrics, instrumental credits, I'm sure you can't read any of that, but it's what it is. Let's see here. Yeah, cover from a painting by Huynh Lewis, titled Heart's Leap. bring the record out itself it didn't come in this white sleeve originally but it's a plastic line sleeve for those of you freaks out there who are thinking oh my god um, but I like the aesthetic and those of you who saw the last video know that I had look after in a black sleeve and heart leap in a white sleeve and yeah, you get the idea uh, but yeah here's the label a side label nothing too fancy one thing I did notice is that the A and B's on the label of this record are both capitalized, while the A's and B's on Look Aftering are lowercase. Fun fact for any of you who might be keeping score. But uh, yeah, it's very much got the same, or a similar, very similar design, the same aesthetic in its design as Look Aftering. It's very much a companion piece, very much a companion album to that uh, to that one. They make a very nice set, which is, I, I think they really honestly should be listened to together, Look Aftering and uh, Heart Leap, because, you know, this one presents a somewhat more delicate, ethereal side, and Look Aftering is, in its own way, slightly stronger. And uh, speaking of which, actually, between 
filming my review for Look Aftering and filming this review, I picked up Look Aftering on CD at my uh, local record shop. So there you go. You can see them side by side. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's... Uh, let me know below in the comments now that I've been rambling for, you know, 15 plus minutes here. Uh, or have you heard Heart Leap? And, you know, I mean, I'd ask if you're familiar with Vashti Bunyan, but, you know, I would assume if you've been following these videos since this is the third one, you're at least vaguely familiar. Otherwise, uh, you know, if this is the first you've heard of her, let me know that too. Um, you know, let's get a discussion flowing in the comments. She's definitely one of my all-time favorite singer-songwriters, even though she's got a very small body of work with just three albums and a couple features and collaborations here and there, but uh, she's a very special lady, and I'm glad that she, uh, you know, released music. It's been very inspiring and helpful to me in my life. Uh, so anyways, uh, I haven't given this a rating yet. I would easily rate it 9 out of 10. Not quite a 10 out of 10. It's definitely a 9 out of 10. Super strong. Super great. It's just, you know, if, if it had a little more something, it'd be a 10. But, again, it's great heart food. Great medicine for the soul. It's perfect early morning listening. Perfect late night listening. You know, it's... It's great stuff. Can't go wrong. Anyways, thanks for watching. This has been Matthew Buckley Talks Music with Vashti Bunyan Heart Leap. Music is the best. <laughs>